cell phone devices and so on keep coming and then we kind of have it. So, remember this picture? <laughs> so what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I really like the movie. So this is our agenda. We were kind of touching upon understanding the cyber world, right? How it impacts our social media, our life, and typically the aspect of child security. As a cyber security expert, I do go to many of these uh, presentations where law enforcement and everybody comes in, and they are really, really a scary scenario when you, when you hear what happens. But somehow it has come into our life in the last 20 years without realizing that it's there everywhere. Uh, like, I think humans are not evolved that much as the technology has pushed of this much of uh, sharing uh, that we do with, the, with this kind of a technology. So we'll talk about social media a little bit, common threats, what can I do, I'm a busy parent, what else, what, what we can try, how not to get into peer pressure and give the cell phone to your kids, or if you do, how, how, what controls can you make so that they are protected, they are safe. So this picture again, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But what happens in Vegas stays on Facebook and YouTube all the time. So we are living in a world which, which we call a digital dirt. What does that mean? It's like it's not going anywhere. You put a picture there, now it will be there all the time. Some cases people have to pay, some, there are some organizations where you have to pay, you have to hire them so that your, and with whatever the reason, you are there, probably you don't want you to be searched in the Google to go on the 10th page so that you are not there in the search criteria. So, Somehow, we lived a life, and basically, like, we are not just immigrant in this country, we are also digital immigrant. That means we saw the whole evolution of computers coming in, we get into technology, everybody's going other jobs, we decided to take technology as our job. Whether we decided or not, everybody got into technology. But your kids, our kids, they are digital native. They're not digital immigrant. They learn to click before they crawl. So, and, and, and sometimes it's easy, like with parenting, okay, but and they are far better than you swiping the phone than you have done in the past, or when you were learning. When you were holding the mouse the first time, they're far better than you in clicking what to be clicked. So, this is something we gotta talk about, what we can do so most of us are digital immigrants. Our children are digital natives. And they are born in this connected world. So the point is that whatever your kid is putting in the phone or you are putting in the phone, it's not going anywhere. But somehow, getting into that mode that you can understand or you let them understand it, that what could be the serious consequences of whatever you put here is something that we have to teach. And we have to ask that question, are we doing that? Or are we doing it positively? Because sometimes there is a lot of peer pressure that everybody has a phone, why I don't have a phone? So I, I want like, maybe like, maybe I have put a QA uh, later on the, on the uh, presentation, but we can uh, discuss some scenarios. So what I also do, similar presentation, this is for parents, where we can discuss few things. I have also done for the kids um, seven to 10 or 10 to 11. Because almost at the age of seven, you're starting to see that pressure uh, that they want a phone with them or they want access to the devices, right? And 13 is a very critical age where you see the risk of either then get going into some online gaming where they, they are not aware of what's, what is a personally, anyway, first of all, my question, who knows what is PII means? I think everybody knows. 
You don't? B-I-I. B-I-I. Personal information. Personally, personally identifiable information, right? So I teach kids, and these are like small kids at the age of seven to eight, like how do they differentiate? That what is a PII, what is not a PII? So it's like your name, your, your age, your telephone number, your home address, this is all PII information. What ice cream do you like? Is it a PII? So they can understand, they can differentiate. If they are sharing an information where do they live, that's they should not. But what ice cream they like, what color they like, is it okay to share or not? So it's like seeding that, that, that from the very beginning that what you should be sharing online and what you should not share. So feel free if you want to talk about anything, you want to share your experience. This is all parents, I'm in the same boat, two kids, and we can kind of, at, at this age where it's hard to say no uh, because of the peer pressure, but at the same time, as a parent, you want them to be safe and secure when they go online. Just a, just a uh, thought around this thing, uh, staying on the same topic. Uh, when we talk about the application, right? We're talking about some of the very well recognized applications, and that's basically the medium, right? Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, to name a few, right? They are the legit platforms, and that's basically the channel of that is communication, right? Instant communication, passing on the feet, pictures, and things like that. How safe is that platform? Yeah. And Right, and compared to the ones we'll talk about it. First of all, me coming from security, right? I do not think anything is safe. I mean, but I'm like, I'm paranoid. <laughs> and I, I, I make whomsoever I agitate them to become paranoid. I don't want this device. This has come from like your drawing room to your bedroom. The first thing you do when you get up, what do you do? Yeah. You don't see your kid, you don't hug your husband, you just take your phone, right? <laughs> Ask that question. That's the most adorable thing that has become in our life. Oh my God. And even Google start asking the question. Did you sleep 10 o'clock and wake up at five? Why? What the hell? Why do you need to that information? You say, yeah, have you seen that? Alexa. Uh, no, even like, Google. Like in the morning, it comes like because yeah. it knows what time I last time did and what time I turned on the phone. And even Alexa. Oh, that's, yeah. that's all together a different thing. Like anybody's listening, everybody's listening, and they're listening everything. So. But I'm paranoid, so I'll come, we'll come to you and we'll discuss that. So understanding cybersecurity, that means, uh, sorry for the typo. Knowing the rules of the road, your behavior, you protect yourself by following certain rules. So let's discuss the threat, and, and this is, I think, you may have kids aged from seven to 13 or 14, so everything is critical there. And, when I do this exercise with the kids, I'm shocked and I thought, my kids, they don't know anything. Like, I'm fully controlled and you'll be surprised when you hear what they're talking. So, our level of understanding, I, I think I have seen this as a parent is always for four years behind. Because you remember your child at that and he has already gone ahead of you. So, but this is the time when I kind of understood social media presence in general, sexting, cyberbullying, gaming. All of them, I think, we probably, as, as us as an adult, we probably don't think of sexting or cyberbullying or gaming. We are mostly there in the Facebook or WhatsApp world, but there is a lot of thing that happens with the gaming when the kids get introduced into the gaming and now they're not just playing within their own domain in the house, they're playing anywhere in the world. So that's where it is more critical to understand what are the consequences there. So these, these are just data, I'll not bore you, and then we'll come with an interactive uh, conversation. Just a, uh, this is a safe and secure online. They have done the research. I think it's few years uh, old, but the data could be, it's much higher than what is it showing now. So around 30% of children eight to four use the internet in a way they know their parents would not approve. So it happens. Chatting. So if you are in the cyber world, as a parent, I think I said to do that, sorry. Chatting and using webcams with strangers, borrowing parents' credit cards, making poor decisions with personal information. So because many of the games also, which comes, are maybe free, but some of the features 
could be paid. So Kit may tell you, oh, this is all free games are downloaded, but you just need a credit card information in order to just meet register, but you do not know which feature is actually really paid content. And you have just, we also get lazy with that, give a credit card and you don't know. So maybe this is something, check your credit cards, like you're not, uh, you're not charged for something which you have not opted for. Sometimes it happens, it's a trial version and then it keeps recurring charges uh, with the credit card. So we talked about they can, they can stalk before they can crawl, and this is basically from the every uh, uh, the, the small age. So just the fact, half of the children surveyed are on the internet after 10 p.m. on school. So they are late because they may be on the internet. So again, these are the facts. I'll go quickly on these. Just I want to make sure. 10% admit they are late to school because being online late at the night. 5% missed school because they were too tired from being online late. 90% have their phone, tablet, or computer in the room. This is the biggest problem. Remember those desktop days? And you connect with that... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, do you remember the tune leg, like the, the, the way it comes? But this is stationary, right? You can see who is accessing and what, right? That, that thing is gone, so now um, you have tablet, they have tablets, you have phones, they have phones and now the content is in the screen, they can see whatever they want to see. Unless you put some control and do that research, so that's also there. So let's talk about some setting up some simple uh, controls that you can do. And these are simple things, again, uh, I'm not saying it's a solution that's gonna prevent everything, but again, there are a few things that you can do. Probably make the charging station at one place, right? If they, I will say that avoid having computers in their room, like put it somewhere next to the kitchen table or something, like if you have to walk on something, come over here and walk. If they still want it, at least make sure that your screen is facing the door. Because everybody think, oh my child is so good, they're not doing it, but we have seen ourselves, our behavior, you want to do, it's so much distraction, you want to do some work, and then all of a sudden a link come there, you go to YouTube, then you're listening to Sadhguru, and then you're going somewhere else, and you're going somewhere else. Like, it's, it's like hard to control yourself, and there are the web application that comes, they say, okay, that's, if you want to be productive, just block your time, that's how you do it, no internet. So I also travel a lot, so I love that flying time, because if I have to finish something, I want to make sure I have all the content and I can just, without any distraction, even though in flight also you can, you can get connected, right? Mm -hmm. So there are many things that you can do, but I mean, few things uh, that you can just think of. What is basically that you are aware that there is a situation, you are not just, just don't want to leave things on cruise control. That's the point. Okay, so let's talk about the social media. Can you guys all uh, tell what are these symbols? I know your kids know. What's the last one? Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah, you What's got that it. we? Yeah. What is that we? No, it's wine. That, that's also something I didn't know. Uh, Twitter and then Facebook. So even Facebook is not so cool now because their parents and grandparents, everything is there, so they don't go on the Facebook. So it's, it's not that. And 30% of the children lie about their age because some of these, to your point, uh, Darpan, uh, these apps don't allow you to get in. So even parents help them. <laughs> so that also happens. No, I want to be on Facebook. Okay, you can, you're not 1980s, you're born in 1990s. Okay, get in. So yeah, you can have an account. Sometimes parents itself are so proud of their Facebook account, they are showing everything because they have to show what they eat, what they wear, where the kids go, where they go for vacation, what's the next vacation coming. Like, everything is there. And I can tell you in India, there are cases happens when, um, what is the equivalent of virus there? CBI. No, no, those, those would make rates for like... Um, income tax. Income tax, income tax, yeah. So they have come and they say, okay, aapke paas yala haar hai, baut sundar hai, that's good. And I don't have it, no, no, wo Facebook mein hai. So they have done this thing, like going over the Facebook and figuring out, but this is kind of a, in a funny way, but we, we are kind of taking it more as a 
popularity contest, okay, how much you can put, how much you can not put. Selfie, they take selfie and they die. Recently, yeah, recently I've seen, like, it's like, there's a, I mean, people say, what's the hell, live life, king style, do din ki zindagi, okay, not this way, man, come on, like, they just died because they were taking selfie, I don't know if you hear the story, I think it's too, it's a couple, um, very young age, yeah, that's what national park, and they, they say, I mean, they say they have, they have done many adventurous things, but this may be the Indian, one last thing. Yeah, they are Indian couple. Yeah. But the, the thing is, I've seen in India, it's a lot of change. And I'll share you something. Like in India, it has gone worst. A, because 2 GB of data every day. <laughs> I'm telling you, we never got it here. And I was like surprised, everybody like you go to the streets in the city or the village, everybody's holding phone. And they have good phones, like China, made in China, they are so cheap and they everybody's managing four, five thousand. If not, uh, people have habit of putting their whole salary and buying a phone, which we don't do here. I think we're not that crazy. But it's so, uh, I mean, somebody having a cell phone of 50,000 Indian rupees is very common. And I think that may be a partial salary, actually a significant part of your salary, but people are ready to put that much money in. <coughs> But I think there's two GB of data every day, and then again, yeah, Netflix is in there, right? So I think they are already start seeing where people cannot move fingers or like they're going into rehab or something. They, they, that business will boom up now there as well, right? Rehab because they they cannot focus on anything. They're so much addicted to this being on on uh, mobile. So all data provided to a social network is stored, and most of the time it is shared by default. So my simple rule is, and again, it's coming from a security guy, that nothing is safe. I don't want to say all blue and kind of dark and pink, but I cannot paint a rosy picture. This is a war we are losing every day. It doesn't matter which company and say what. You remember that typical when uh, Mark Zuckerberg and they were asking the question and he said, can you repeat that question? <laughs> You remember that clip that keep coming all the time again and again? So what happens, all this data is shared by default. Which is, again I don't want to distract, which is different than GDPR. European countries, they are, they are far better than us from the beginning. So like here we get everything default is shared, there you have to check a box to get it shared. So that's kind of different. So we are, we are so, uh, I mean, assuming that your data is secure is not the case. One thing I'll say, I think, Darpan, that you asked which application. So some of these applications that kids use, and that would be a point we'll cover where you think what happens, application shows you a photograph or a fraction of a second or something, which you assume that it's not stored. So your kid will say, if it is kind of a grown up kid and maybe content is explicit, oh, they, the, the app doesn't store the data. Then you have to show them. App may not be storing, but somebody can always take a screenshot. So I think that mindset is not there, which we have seen in the world, right? Like that, like this is, we have a default faith. Oh, this is the app, this is there, I can use it. But you don't know what's happening behind the scene, how much your data is protected or not protected. So again, this is all about sharing everything, which we do all the time. So stop and think, and never share your age, school, address, phone number, last name, vacation information, blah, blah, blah. There is a typical saying, uh, a picture is like a thousand words, better than thousand words, it actually shows you more than that. You have a picture, it can tell you what street you are in, it can tell you what's your car number, it can tell you the identity in the background, we have a newer apps coming in, where they have the face recognition, so somebody, if it is, has that mindset, they can run a small program. And now these, these hackers need not to be super smart programmers. You have so many apps to get on the other side of the, the table and do, do, do a lot of damage. I will also talk about geotagging. So geotagging is like when you take in pho a photograph and it basically tells you where you are because you have coordinates there, right? So it's like uh, latitude, longitude. So you can always turn it off. 
this is a very simple thing that you can do that you don't have to do in all the apps some of the apps you do want where technology helps if you want to locate somebody then you have those apps where I mean I know they'll still be sharing the data but again you you pick the uh, less evil and I, I use that because it can tell you where your parents are or if somebody is having a phone and, and these apps are getting better they can tell you exact right location so if your phone is lost you can do that so this turning off the geotagging you can do with with your photographs but for some of the apps so you can selectively choose where you want to turn it off or you want to keep it off is this in the system of the iphone or any phone camera uh, setting in the camera, camera setting, setting. Yeah. any camera setting you'll, you'll have that they say i would disable that so, I, but otherwise, like it just tells me exactly, like pinpoint where exactly this photo is taken. That's that's the latitude and longitude. So again, a quick recap. And before we recap, I just want to share one more thing. You remember, when we were kahin jaate the, and always grandparents are there, right? So what they used to say if you're traveling the first time, what what the first word if your grandparents are there? I remember from my grand. I used to travel from train and I was. Don't talk to strangers. Right. Right. And what else? Your address, your phone number, contact. Don't eat. 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 Somehow, when we transitioned from that word to the digital word, we forgot that the same rules apply. And it's more important because in the physical world, you have to step out. But in the digital world, you're not stepping out. You're in your comfort. And that's where you are opening the door. So, Few uh, things. Respect age ratings. Let me just check quickly. Again, if you, if you guys want to talk about something else, like what what's your experience? How do you see this challenge? So there's a one thing which I feel. You, you're absolutely right with most of the observation, right? I, I, no dispute about that. Everything is getting better or tougher, and everything is open. The the one thing I always keep thinking is, I, I think about how how do you tell the child that control yourself. Like, when, when the way it works is when parents tell a child, do not do this, do not do this, you are hitting a wall. Mm -hmm. It'll drop off very quickly mm -hmm. because they have a peer group, they have everything else. And it's just like, change the view in which you say that. You want to accomplish that, right? Like, you want to get there. But if you put the onus on them saying, hey, you know, think about all these things. Learn to protect yourself. Right. It's a it's a different angle you approach that same problem. Yep, I agree. And I, I feel the reception is better. Yep. Because then they start feeling like, and it's not easy. It's not easy to do that. No, it's not. Like as an adult, we cannot control ourselves. Correct. So it's not easy, and especially when the child is younger, it becomes even difficult. Yep. But what, what I think is, if, if you put that onus and keep keep mentioning that, and understand, like if it gets into them, that they need to control themselves. Right. They need to put boundaries themselves. Yep. When that realization happens, I've, I've seen in kids which they have better capability to block things out. A absolutely. And they at least not get distracted for anything and everything. Yeah. No, that's a very good point. But how do you teach them? So, so, you make so, so that's, 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 a, that's a tough things. piece, I feel. Yeah. Which is, there, there is some leap of faith. And that's, that's the hardest piece as a parent because if you are telling a child, hey, you need to learn to control yourself, you need to give him enough space so he can control himself. And, and that, that is a very hard piece, I agree with you. 
but but what I've no, like what I've heard and noticed that if if you do that, you have to trust your child a little bit more, right? And if you if you do that, generally they are, they become self advocated. Like they start blocking. Once they out. understand that this is right, this is wrong, then you don't have to fear. Your fear is over. But the thing is, it is hard to make them understand. So pe that's peer, the point. Peer group. Like what I've noticed is, so if your child is like 10 year old or 11 year old or 12 or whatever, yeah. if there is a group which is two or three years older, yeah. and if they are talking to them about the same thing, mm -hmm. it's a whole, their, their barriers are down, they can relate to them, they listen to them. Yeah. It's, it's it like it works wonders. Like I've, I notice sometimes, like, you know, it's like old. a mentoring from somebody yeah. who has just 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 just, just, just there. Yeah. They can relate to that. Right. Yeah, exactly. And instead of like you having a twenty year gap or a right, twenty year right. gap as a parent, you have a three four year gap and some reason. I, I so I agree with the wholeheartedly. No, no, this is this is absolutely like a good point to also think like how, to your point, how do we educate them? So I think we should research like one of the links that have sent safe and secure dot org. You should go there. So basically educate them that why privacy is so important. Because as I said, when we are as a digital immigrant, we learn the process. As a digital native, we are giving things which are which has not seen like 20 years is nothing for anything to improvise. As a human, we are living for billions of years and we know there are rules for communication. If somebody shows your eyes, that means a different yeah. but in this this is all messed up, right? If you think from evolution point of view, we are not ready. Now you're in the bedroom and you're doing anything, connecting with everywhere. There are certain rules that should have come up. How will it come up, right? So we cannot say that a commercial company will do that because they're making money. Everybody's they're making, making money out there. Yeah. Nobody's take that that uh, uh, that uh, kind of responsibility for that. It's we have to put those rules around it. So, yeah. so I think to your point and. Uh, so I'm also um, Connecticut. So I see Square. We have local chapters. I'm a member in the Connecticut chapter, and we sometimes we have some of those. So CISSP is kind of a certification I have done. So many of those folks come in, and their kids they started get, getting their kids. So basically, at the age of 14, we who so basically these are new budding security guys. Basically, we tell them so they can. To your point, they can educate them. So I do these things in the schools as well which help them because cyberbullying is like, we have no idea, it's a huge thing. Huge Sexting is huge thing, like because it's so easy. You take a phone, take a picture, share it anywhere. And when it goes from one place to another, sure. the whole world. Sure. So so it's 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 so relevant, but it's the thing is, we cannot just leave it on autopilot. That's that's my point. We cannot just turn around and say, okay, nothing will happen. It, something will happen. So. Maybe later an example. So I, I, I keep thinking, what are the, like, what are the forums in which that can happen, right? Like. So one is you need to you you need to educate them. Parent has a say clearly. Yeah. What you said first thing like start early, keep talking. Yep. Those things are very important. And after a point, they'll be like, "What the hell? Oh, come on!" So you said that again. Like in some before. school, they do this these classes as digital citizenship, yeah. right? So check with them, ask them, uh, "What are you telling about security?" I have seen so many loopholes. Go to this folder and everybody kid's name is there. Like, okay. Sometimes I just I say I cannot find anything, but I still talk to them. Don't do this, right? Yeah. So you can you can poke them like that. What are you doing about security? Are you what kind of awareness training you are giving it to kids? Just as an employee, we get right. As an employee, you get all those trainings, right? Pfizer things or like so you're not clicking any link somewhere, like because that's I think affect our work. So companies force us to do that so they can get your signature, you took this training. So if you do that, they can probably fire you and you cannot say anything. They may have another reason. But there's one way is like also just to make you aware of what can go wrong. So like I keep thinking about forums and I don't want to hijack this conversation. Uh -huh. No, no. But one of the forums is like, you know, hit the USA. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, believe me or not, be, there are younger kids, there are older kids. And the moment you pick up a few older kids who are going to talk to young, younger kids, like that's the kind of forum you yep. want because right. you have parents reinforcing, as, as you said, all the, all of us do it in some shape or form. Schools do it, yep. to, to your point. And moment they start hearing from a peer group, which is right. close to them, right. Right. It, it, becomes a, it becomes real. It becomes real, yeah. right, I agree. So we can have one of the recently graduate students take a workshop, those four years, 
six years plus. Or just go casual yeah. conversation, you know. Yeah. They need to be in one place. So yeah. we, we, yeah. Yeah. we have a seminar for the kids for here. Yeah. Yeah. Six thirty yeah. to seven, yeah. maybe one Friday. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I can I can do yeah. it for the kids, and then to your point, to make it more effective, let let advocate should should come from a kid only itself, yeah. right? Yeah, we can have Adi or all these yeah. recent yeah. graduates, yeah. like uh, seniors too, yeah. educated. And in yeah. all this darkness, the one silver lining is the security jobs are awesome for next thirty <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want your kid to be in there, that's like just just. Maybe great. you can do two I, in one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, are you opening a company so it's a Yeah. All the new No, why don't we just ask Manish ji and do this class? Yes. I think it's interesting for the parents. Yeah. Yeah. More than that, the kids, if they hear it from you, yeah. because with the parents, it's like, you know, yeah, mom, yeah. yes, mom, no, parents, and, and we got it. The, it's only the third person which makes it. Yeah. To your point, the last time, whenever I have done this conversation, it starts from me talking about this. Then it's turned into a group discussion. And it's important to hear like about, because we teach our kids about bullying, right? Don't talk to the person, right? Don't do this. But in cyberbullying, is, is anonymity is such a great factor that somebody can write at that certain age, write to your kid, and he's not responding. He's, his brain is still maturing. He's not ready for that. And how do they cope up with that? Because earlier, it was a phase. Hey, you can talk to the parents, you can say to the school here, you're, they have no clue what to do. Yeah. You can tell them, okay, block this person. How do you do this? this that's okay. It's, it may be somebody. We can turn off that ID or whatever, right? You can, you can teach them those ways, but that's kind of, if, if you don't give them training, they're probably just thinking ourselves. But I think this point was different, right? This point was, I mean, I think it's great if you would do a session with the kids, but I think his point is to have older kids talk. Exactly. To no, no. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, like what, what I think, just to be clear, the way I think of the strategy, right, it's not, it's not one thing which is going to solve it. It's parents talking, it's school talking, it's the peer group awareness, and, and the forum which they're going in. So, so your, your best, your safest way to do that is if you have these layers, I, the chances are the kid will understand. And the moment the kid understands himself, that is the best security, right? I mean, that's the right. argument. I mean, we, to, to, to your point, Rajni, we need like volunteer kids who understand, have yeah. gone through it, and then can pass the I same think message. there's constant pressure for kids that have gone through it also. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a great idea and worth trying because some yeah. good can come out of it, but we cannot assume that just because a 10 year old is now 15 year old, they're not feeling pressure. Right. They probably are also still feeling a lot of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I mean, your point is good. Uh, my son will listen to an older boy like that, and I can say the same thing 10 times and he won't listen. But uh, I mean, it's good to have used this resource, but uh, I feel those kids themselves are probably, we, we may feel they're through it, but they're not over the pressure, right. peer yeah, pressure. Right. Right. No, so that's where, that's where the, the, the whole idea is that if they learn what is information security is, what does it mean? Your information will haunt you. Like when you go for a job, if you posted something, yeah. recruiters, yeah. that's the first thing they'll be looking. Like in your college, how it can impact you, right? So, I mean, that's how, it, so basically the, the, the messaging can be different and cater to the right audience right. that way. Yeah, the older ones do understand these things that yep. go. Yep, because they are going for the college, right? right. right. Cyber bullying, for cyberbullying, can you elaborate a little bit? Yeah, let's talk about it. Yeah. That, uh, block yeah. the person who is basically annoying them or giving hard time. Yep. So, what are the other areas or the options that we can think of so that we can teach our kids, like, okay, these are the cyberbullying basically, and right. what are the options they can opt? to go away from it. Yep, no, absolutely. Like this, the one that you said, I never thought that block. So this number yep. and that person, yep. is there any other option? Yeah, let's talk about this. Stuff. So the sex thing, the reason I'm saying, like we cannot taboo anything. For a younger kid at this age, boys and girls, and if you have the phone, if your kid has a photo which is explicit material, that kid may be charged for child pornography if the authorities find it. So don't think it's both sides. 
So we have to, and, and, and it's not, this is the word where it goes on fire like this. You just, you just shared it and it's gone. Friend of, your friend is like fr the whole word. So it's very critical for them to understand this is digital dirt, it's not going anywhere. Cyberbullying to your point. We can ask them, so basically I think the fundamental rules are still the same. When somebody bullies you, the same thing, we have to think how we can convert into a digitally frame, right? What do you say if somebody uh, do the bullying to your kid? You say, okay, I'll talk to their parents. Can you tell me about this? Just ignore him. So the simple things, in same role, you have to just think about digitally. Identify who they are. If not, just block them. If you find it's happening in the school environment, talk to the, to the school because they should be controlling the parameters there as well. So in my opinion, the rules, and I just see it like whatever the problems we see in the real world and the precautions we have taken to avoid them, a digital version of the same rule also exists for the digital problems. So But as I said earlier, anonymity, anonymity is, is, is kind of not an excuse to say anything. So that's where the problem comes in because, and that's what impacts the child a lot. So teach them how to report an inappropriate ID online, block that ID from future interaction. That's the easiest thing you can block. So some of those things is like what happens when they, they face such so thing, and sorry about that, I'm kind of. We can. Uh maybe next year early next year we can have another session with specific examples and what to do and what not to do right, right. again we'll we'll plan it like yeah I, I targeted don't... focused on certain apps or certain things certain questions so feel free to send questions guys we'll try to address right so I, I don't want to kind of force feed right now but the other thing that i was kind of uh, considered was the gaming then in our time gaming was different you remember mario and then those things but it's all a different ball game the kind of nudity and in the con explicit content you get nowadays in the game, even though there is a rating system, is beyond our uh, what we expect. Other thing is, the content of gaming may not, so you, there is always a rating system, right? I think I had a slide just to reflect that. Um, yeah, the one yeah, that was a slide. You oh, that slide. Oh, okay. Yes. 17 Next. plus. No, so I had, I had another slide, I think I took it off. It's, it has a rating for all, like G, P, G, whatever, right? So even though the, the, the content of the game is not for the mature content, but the community of those who are playing that game may not be the same. And if it goes into online gaming, then you have no idea what age is the other side is. So that's another thing. Any, anyway, uh, not to overfeed this thing. So feel free to give your feedback. Anything else what we want to do? These are good suggestions that are coming in. We want to. Yeah, we want to uh, that session kind of a thing. Sure, we'll absolutely. So just pass on your feedback yeah. to Anshul. Okay. Yeah. Just reply to email, is that the best way? So yeah. I can save it and okay, yeah. we'll try to address it all at once. Thank you yeah. so much. And if Thank you want to see me, you will not see me in Facebook or anywhere. <laughs> I'm downstairs. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.